Welcome back to Kids in the Kitchen. Before the break, we prepared fried potatoes using red potatoes, onions, and red and green peppers, as well as fried apples using Granny Smith apples, brown sugar, and cinnamon. Now we're going to get started on preparing our oven-baked chicken and a frittata. So, Mike and Tucson, take it away. Okay. While you guys work on that, I'm going to look and see on our apples and potatoes. Okay, so my father normally would have fried chicken, but kids in the kitchen were trying to promote a healthy lifestyle. So instead of frying chicken, we're going to do oven fried chicken today. Before the break, what we did was we added some more buttermilk, but last night we seasoned the chicken, a little salt, pepper, garlic powder, whatever you have, some paprika. And then our, our special ingredient is buttermilk. We're using that to marinate the chicken and help it uh, tenderize the chicken. So Tucson is going to help me coat the chicken. We have uh, breadcrumbs that have a little bit of the same seasonings in here. We'll put the chicken in the bag, shake them up, and then put them on the plate. Sound good? Okay, I can put the, are you fine putting your, getting your hands dirty? Okay. So you can do one, bring your bag over, sweetheart. Okay, put it in. There you go, do one more. Okay, so then hold it with one or two hands. And then shake it up. There you go. That looks pretty good. Now you want to coat the chicken well with the breadcrumbs. Give it one more toss. You're probably done. Take it out. Put it on the plate. Now, Monica, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to start working on sauteing the tomatoes, the peppers, the onions, um, and um, the green peppers for your frittata that's coming up. Okay. I just put a little bit of butter in the pan. Good. Let it melt down, and I'm just going to go ahead and put the vegetables on so they'll be nice and soft and ready when you guys come over. Thank you. Now, you can use seasoned breadcrumbs, you can use plain breadcrumbs. I chose the seasoning for ourselves. And one of the things that you need to make sure you do when you're doing oven fried chicken is you want to spray the chicken down with Pam. Sheila, can you put that uh, cookie sheet in the oven for me? Sure. Well, actually, it's already took care of it. Excellent. So you want the cookie sheet to be hot, piping hot. So you want to have it in there for maybe about two minutes. And you'll, we'll be spraying the chicken down with Pam on both sides, popping it in the oven. If you forget to spray your chicken down with Pam, what happens is you have dry chicken. It'll still taste just as good, but in terms of presentation, it won't look as appetizing. I think Tucson is almost done. And what I'm going to have him do is wipe off his hands, and then we'll be spraying the chicken down with olive oil. Okay. Do you need the pan yet? Um, I think now's a good time, yeah. Okay. Well, so right before can... I bring it over, I'm going to go ahead and put the water in the pan for the potatoes. Okay. Okay. We have about a half a cup of water here that we're just adding to the home fries, just to help it cook down a little bit okay. and get a little bit softer. Oh, I'm just going to pour yeah, this in. Don't wash it. And I'm going to put a lid on the potatoes and let it continue to cook. All right, Mike, I'm going to bring the pan over to you in one second. Okay, thank you. So I'm spraying one side. And Tassan's going to help me out by spraying the other side. Did you dry up your hands? Yeah, it'll make it easier. There you go. So we did get the place a little bit messy, but that's okay. Don't be afraid. Where should I put it, Mike? Okay, just... You can just pop it up over and hold it out for us. That's good. Okay, so let's bring this over here. Okay, I'm going to put it on. There we go. Not here. Right, you flip your knees over. Now, the great thing about having this type of recipe is perfect to cook with your family because you can see there's a lot of dishes cooking and there's a lot of things for. No, don't touch. There's a lot of things for multiple hands to do. Okay, okay now you can spray, spray your pan. Yeah, you don't want to touch the, the cookie sheet because it's really, really hot. There you go. Looking pretty good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put it in the mm -hmm. oven. Now, while we're doing that, Tucson is going to start mixing up our eggs for our omelet. Remember how we were showing you before? I'm going to mix them that way, if you can do that. Okay. Now remember you want to have a rolling motion. Kind of, let me show you one more time. You want to hold the bowl with one hand, and then with your other hand, kind of in a little circle. 
like that. Try that. Okay. Are you right-handed? Yes. Okay. So maybe it's easier if you hold the bowl with your right hand. Well, you're doing a good job, actually. Okay. See, what do I know? That's looking really good. A little bit more. How are the veggies looking, Sheila? Everything's ready to go. I think they're soft and, and, and pretty much ready for your egg. Okay, excellent. We're going to go over to the stove now and pour our eggs in. You want to hold the bowl? There you go. What? Okay. Okay, so very carefully pour that in. Now with eggs, you want to go ahead and pour it in. With eggs, what you want to do is make sure you're cooking them over a low flame with eggs, right? The important thing with cooking eggs is that you keep the flame low to medium because if you cook the eggs too quickly, they'll come out hard. What happens is that the heat makes the protein unravel and bond together. So you want to keep the protein kind of loose and fluid so you have nice fluffy eggs. Another way that you can do that is you can um, add some milk with that milk or water in there or even some cream half and half if you have it at home. So that'll help keep the moisture within the egg. So with a flat omelet, we're not going to do any flipping today. We're going to have the egg just kind of cook up the sides and we'll be finishing it in the oven. So we're going to have the bottom cooked, so that's why we have a low flame. And once we have the top set a little bit, we'll put it in the oven for about two or three minutes. And that way, it'll be solid. Look pretty good. You want to try? Okay. So you, right, but you want to keep it close to the flame, closer to the flame. There you go. Then put it back. You want to let it settle just a little bit. Okay, do you want to go ahead and sprinkle some of our cheese? We're using Parmesan cheese. It'll give our eggs some body, a little bit of flavor. Just sprinkle it slowly. You can use as much as you want. Do you like a lot of cheese or a little? Um, medium. Medium? Okay, then do medium cheese. That's looking really good. Let's take a look at the potatoes. Ah, Sheila! What? The potatoes are looking lovely. Oh, excellent, excellent. And I'm really liking the way the apples are looking. Look at how that sauce is caramelizing. The apples, it's, it's going to taste similar to an apple pie no crust. Okay. So, you have any uh, questions for us to son? Are you pretty good? You think you can do this at home? Um, maybe. Maybe? Yes. Now, if you were going to make an omelet, what would you have in it? Ham. Ham? Okay. Anything else? Peppers. Some peppers? Okay. So, we're going to continue cooking our omelet and um, our fried potatoes, and we'll be right back with more kids in the kitchen. This is looking good. See, I'm just going to ease this up on the sides. Mm -hmm. See how it's looking a little solid? Mm -hmm. 